Hello and welcome back to City Skylines 2 everyone. We're continuing the development of our sort of realistic North American themed city of Riverview and in the previous episode we developed a large area to the immediate east of the city. Um, we made a, a big countryside full of farms and apple tree fields uh, but we also made sure to dot in some a pretty cookie cutter suburban subdivisions to kind of showcase the suburban sprawl of Riverview, uh, as well as a few smaller settlements on the outskirts of the countryside. And if you enjoy my content, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you've just forgotten to. More than 80% of my viewers aren't subscribed, so thanks in advance. For today's episode, there are quite a few things I would like us to achieve. Um, one of them being more development here in the northeastern part of the city. But before we uh, we go anywhere, we have to fix a few issues here in the new area to the immediate east of the city. And I've also got to rename a few of these smaller settlements. In the previous episode, I asked for suggestions, maybe even backstories. And I got a ton of cool feedback from you guys, so thank you very much. Um, this also means that I can start naming some stuff already. Uh, so the first one is uh, from uh, Samuel, who suggests that we rename Primrose Town, which is uh, an auto-generated name uh, by the game, to Crestwood. And I'll just post a comment here so you can also see the backstory of the area, which is uh, quite cool. So we'll just do that little renaming. Next up, we've got the Green Worm, who suggested that we rename Evergreen End to Calvay. Uh, so this is the small settlement here, kind of situated in the center of the countryside. Um, so we, we'll rename that to Calvay, and I'll uh, post the backstory uh, as well, so you guys can, can take a look. Now, the issue I was talking about is that we've already got some abandonment here on the outskirts of this countryside. And if we check for the reason for the unhappiness, then high crime is like the, the primary uh, detractor to the happiness of the citizens out here in Birdsong Corner. Let's see for the entire uh, district. Yeah, high crime. There's also a lack of education services and unreliable healthcare coverage. And I suppose it's pretty much it's sort of the same in Palmer way but not quite uh, crime doesn't seem to be an issue here so something indicates that birdsong corner is just a little too far away from the local police department so i'm gonna see if i can fix this with some of the new district tooling that we have available to us oh sorry that's the wrong wrong button we've got three police stations in riverview and the one that should probably serve this rural area is the one here in the East Riverview. So if we select that, um, first I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rename it. Oh. oh, what am I doing? Rename it the correct way, of course. So we'll say East Riverview Police Station. Um, all six patrol cars are currently in use, so I'm thinking that we'll need to add a garage extension, which doubles the patrol car capacity. And then what I'm thinking is that I'm going to use this new uh, selection of operating districts feature to uh, restrict the East Riverview police uh, station or department to serve East Riverview, which is uh, pretty much a city on its own right. Uh, on the eastern side of the main river that cuts through the uh, metro area. So I'm going to make sure that this serves these uh, areas solely. Uh, and I guess an issue here is that when you start using uh, specific operating districts as a restriction to a service provider, then um, the police station is going to stop servicing areas that are not covered by a district. So ideally, uh, all of this should be turned into districts. So I'm going to have to do that at some point in time, but I just can't be bothered right now because it would be quite a few extra districts to add. And this should cover the majority of the, the population centers we have in this area. So I'm hopeful this is going to work, uh, but we'll, we'll of course be able to check for the effect. I'm going to delete the abandoned homes so that there's 
free lots for new development. The other issue was that healthcare coverage. Uh, let's see, yeah, unreliable healthcare coverage. And so for Palmer Way, we're, uh, yeah, healthcare coverage is the, uh, is the main issue. Reliable mail service. I'm quite surprised by that because I, I don't have any post boxes out here. I mean, I haven't added any uh, mailboxes, sorry. I'm clicking the wrong button all the time, sorry. Uh, so I think I'm gonna add like a mailbox out here on the main street here, Hillside Street in uh, Palmer Way. That should make it even better. But healthcare coverage was the other issue. So let's go and check our info panel. Um, so we've got a East River Medical Center in East River and it's pretty obvious that the coverage out here is terrible. Um, so I'm hoping that we can uh, we can sort of do the same that we did before actually. So let's see if we select here. We only have a single vehicle in use, a single ambulance. So hopefully the capacity would actually be enough to serve the, uh, the, the outskirts here. We just need to restrict it so that it doesn't start serving this massive area as well, because obviously the the real population centers of our metro area is uh, is on the on the western side of the of the rivers. Let's select operating districts, and we'll do the very same. And we should probably serve Mill Bluff, even though that's only a um, an office district and Valley Crest as well. And we'll do that for the police station as well. And then I'm hopeful that response times are sufficient. Uh, let's see, we'll move up here as well. Cool. I guess the final one should be the firehouse. We'll just check fire coverage throughout the, the region. We've got a firehouse in East Riverview and we've got one uh, in uh, in the, the western part of the region. So I'm going to do the very same restriction here. And yeah, maybe the distance is, is, is just too big here. But in the previous episode, we did have a fire uh, here in East Riverview that did cause some casualties. Uh, and that's what prompted us to build the uh, firehouse. A uh, nice little political maneuver there. And I mean, ideally, I would also grab the service buildings on the western side and make sure that they're restricted to this area. But I'm just going to wait for a minute and see how big the issue is over here. But I can already see now that it's actually very much the same issue we're seeing over here. High crime is uh, pretty much terrorizing Ravenwood Gardens, which isn't really the... The thing I was aiming for, these uh, swoopy, nice, curvy roads and the tennis courts. I was kind of trying to make an upscale area here. So we are going to have to do the very same thing by restricting the... Uh, this is the police station here in Riverview. Let's say Riverview police station. And it already has the upgrades. And I can't... So I can't expand the vehicle count anymore. Um, but most of the cars are just patrolling without responding to any calls. So hopefully we'll be fine. So I'm going to select the districts this area, should, this uh, police station should cover. Which is most of this part of the city, but not all of it, because we've got a police station up here as well, if I recall. Yeah, we've got the uh, police station here in, in, in Caldwell. So we'll make sure that covers uh, everything else that isn't already covered. And maybe we'll have a bit of an overlap here in, in Butler. And uh, let's let's just see how that works out. Uh, I am aware that there may be a few areas that aren't actually covered by districts and that they are going to have a pretty hard time. Uh, but hopefully these uh, abandoned pop-ups are going to quickly showcase us where that actually is. Uh, so that we can add some better coverage to those. Next on our chopping block is the East Riverview Elementary School, which is at maximum capacity. Um, but we do have an elementary school out here in Sunrise Corner on Briar Rose Field that has quite a few open spots. I'm just expecting that the commute from this area is uh, a little too long. 
uh, distance and time wise. So let's upgrade with an extension wing and make sure that this uh, the school only serves East Riverview and the adjacent countryside. And we'll see if that helps bring an education bump bonus as well to these areas. Now we're seeing a bit of a budget deficit currently here in Riverview, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to just raise taxation for residential just a bit. I've had very low tax levels for quite a bit now, uh, and the idea was to uh, sub subsidize development of new residential um, lots throughout the city. Uh, but I'm going to bring it up just a bit uh, and I think for commercial we'll do the same. We've got a an insane amount of commercial demand and quite a bit of, of industrial demand as well. So I think we can afford raising the tax level just a bit for commercial and even more so for industrial because I'm trying to slowly but surely transition the city into a more service-based economy and I'd like to do away with some of all the industrial demand, uh, hopefully being able to transfer that into offices and high-density commercial instead. So this change uh, already uh, made a, a drastic effect. It added about, uh, let's see, 7,000 or 8,000 credits an hour to our, um, our economy, which is uh, pretty good. It should uh, just help kind of buff out our um, our holdings a bit so that we are better equipped for bad times. And I'm pretty certain that buff out our holdings is a not a sentence that makes sense in, in any language and uh, particularly not in English. So you'll have me excused. <laughs> Anyways, um, I made this district here when we built East Riverview a couple of episodes ago and I'm not too happy with it because I think that it's a little odd for the grid to be broken uh, in a way like this with cul-de-sacs in such a downtown location. So instead I'm going to revamp this area into a grid and then upgrade the whole thing to a row house district. Uh, we'll have areas like this, of course, but I'd rather have it on sort of the outskirts of East Riverview, for instance, out here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead with that upgrade. Now, something I'd like to do when I start building out this area is to have a bit of distance sorry, uh, behind each of the row houses so that we can add in some paths and get in some trees placed. Also, since this is a hill, uh, I don't want the like, lots to be uh, right next to each other as it's going to look pretty weird in people's gardens due to the hilly terrain. So I'm going to try and keep a bit of distance between uh, like each row of row houses add in some paths and uh, add in as many trees and bushes as I can and then hopefully in uh, about 50 or 65 years of real-time play when the trees have actually grown uh, this area is gonna look pretty cozy. I'd also really like some suggestions from you guys to what we're gonna call this area when it's done uh, because I imagine such a such an iconic row house district, really dense row house district uh, in the inner city of East Riverview could have a pretty cool name and story. But uh, enough talking, let's let's get building. I'm going to disable snap to guidelines as well, uh, because I find that this makes uh, making strict grids with 90 degree angles uh, with uh, the zoning not messing up a little easier. I'm not sure if that's just like a placebo feeling, but it seems to work.
So it's uh, probably going to take a little while for the for now named Blackbird Terrace to uh, grow and fill in all the empty lots with uh, with row houses. But I'm um, hopeful it's gonna look it's gonna look pretty nice when it's it's all finished up. I also took the chance to upgrade the alley that led from the college up until downtown uh, East Riverview to uh, a street instead. And then I just lined one side of the street with um, uh, planters and some trees uh, so that we will only have parking on uh, one side and not the side facing the, the college park. I also upzoned a few of these corner lots. So this one is a mixed density as well, bringing a bit of higher density and some shops in here alongside the bigger streets. Did the same over here uh, and I by mistake zoned medium density here instead of row house. Uh, but I decided to just let this one stay just as the odd one out uh, because I kind of like that look. Um, as you saw, I jumped into the um, southern portion over here on East Riverview. This is a Summit Street, which is the main arterial cutting straight through the city. And I've just got an insane amount of commercial demand. So I've rezoned this entire stretch into like a commercial avenue, very low density, tons of surface parking, uh, real North American proper land usage going here. Um, and I've even mixed in some high density commercial. Hopefully it's not too tall, but uh, more uh, stuff like like this, which I think is, is quite fitting. Um, this also required me to move the tram network all the way out here. I created a dedicated like in the flying stop out here uh, and uh, an additional stop alongside Summit Street. Uh, so basically some, some pretty good changes for East Riverview, I feel. All right, so I decided that I couldn't really wait. I got a bit impatient and then I gave uh, a bit of a tax break to residential development. Uh, pretty substantial tax break actually, but it was enough to really start spurring development here. So we are a couple of days uh, later and things are looking pretty good. I'm very happy with how this, this area has turned out. Feels like it's it's quite unique. I've planted a bunch of trees and, and bushes as well. Uh, so I'm hopeful that as we see them uh, grow in 60 years, this area is going to look pretty nice actually. Also added like a small a non-functional makeshift park down here uh, and of course we've got a small park and uh, an outdoor gym here in the in the very center um i've still got an insane amount of commercial demand and i don't really want to uh, expand east riverview more for now it's already uh, built up enough as it is it probably if anything it, it needs more low density sprawl so i think we're going to turn our attention to uh, to riverview uh, which is already so built up and then we'll up zone a bunch of commercial here alongside Madison Street uh, because we've already got a pretty high density uh, but we've still got lots of commercial here that we could up zone to high density commercial hopefully that's going to help uh, subdue some demand I'm not sure it's gonna be enough but but we're gonna find out uh, so we're just gonna start up zoning stuff and then seeing kind of where that takes us and also I don't really want like duplicate buildings. So I'm gonna mix in uh, some European stuff as well because for a high density commercial, uh, it looks it looks kind of generic. So, you know, both themes work here, which is of course just a very nice thing. So we're just up zoning wherever it makes sense. We've got a corner lot here, should probably be mixed. And I'm, I'm a bit curious to what sort of demand mixed housing actually satisfies. Uh, because I, I guess it would make sense that it, it primarily satisfies medium density residential demand, but also a bit of low density commercial. Uh, but I really don't know. Um, so if you, uh, if you know, then let me know. Uh, Riverview is really starting to look cool, especially when we've got a bunch of cranes throughout the city more development taking place. So I'm um, even all the way out here in Archer Creek, which is a small area uh, just next to Caldwell, uh, a long distance from downtown, adding a few commercial lots. Hopefully it's gonna 
uh, look like grocery stores and just yeah small local retail um, but it's probably gonna take an even bigger effort to kind of try and fix this commercial demand something that has happened though is that the demand for high density residential has started growing uh, and i've always had this f uh, this idea that i want the riverview central gardens to be faced by luxury apartments uh, a bit like central park in new york now of course it's pretty tough to make apartments look luxurious in this game because the wealth levels doesn't really seem to affect the actual asset design uh, all that much if if at all uh, but i do have some some increased density here uh, at least on this on, on beach lane which is right next to the to the park uh, so i'm hoping that i can just up zone a bit more of this and we'll see some some even denser developments uh, we'll see. Uh, I also want to, of course, avoid building repetition because I'm really not uh, too happy about that. Uh, and I don't want them to be too tall either. So it's it's going to be pretty tricky to to try and get this right. But yeah, I'm just, just going to try and see how it looks by zoning. I, these slots might be too big. We might get some really tall growth, but it's uh, we're trying, we're trying. These are already uh, high density residential from the European theme. Uh, so I'm gonna avoid a three by watch this a three by two and this is a three by four. Um, but maybe I mean I'm not too happy with this one, so maybe just up zoning this one to a four by four is gonna help a bit. And I'm just gonna delete this stuff already and we'll see what actually grows here. I'm liking the height, it's not too tall at least, and the same goes for this one out here. Just north of downtown, construction is uh, also occurring, and we've also got a fire station uh, and a small parking lot very close to downtown, so to uh, upzone a bit more commercial, we can move this fire station out here, something like this, uh, and the parking lot we should probably just remove it's a nice detailing addition to the city especially giving its a north american theme but i mean with this demand we uh, we are going to slowly but surely remove some of the parking lots throughout i've also removed a big one uh, out here in in palma and i might end up removing uh, run more probably in this one because the commercial assets already do have uh, a bit of uh, quite a bit of parking attached so it's only if you really want extra surface parking lot that you have to place them manually as i have uh, but hopefully this will spur a bit of extra densification and development here in downtown and we've got some pretty sweet views of uh, downtown from here at least also the high density uh, residential condo tower that got built here I'm pretty happy with the look uh, due to the fact that it's unique. I don't have it anywhere else in the city. So that is good enough for me. 92 Beach Lane. And obviously you've got some pretty sweet views of, um, of Riverview Central Gardens. And of course also downtown, the mountains in the distance. Uh, views to East Riverview as well. So I'm pretty happy with how this area is just slowly but surely uh, densifying. And another huge residential tower is growing uh, alongside the central gardens. So um, it's going to be really tall. So it's going to be interesting to see if this is one I already have. I don't think so because uh, the zoning tile is 5 five by 3 And I don't think I have that anywhere in the city. Oh man, it looks absolutely terrible. Yeah, there's nothing premium about this one, I'm afraid. So it's going to have to go... Ah oh boy, let's see if these two replacements uh, will look a little better for the for what we want here. So uh, we've still got insane commercial demand, but I'm starting to see a little more healthy, uh, even the spread demand as well. So I'm assuming that I'm starting to uh, to have the the jobs needed to bring in more people, uh, which uh, enables us to actually start expanding into this northeastern farmland, just like we planned. 
So I'm going to start out by creating a basic road layout where we use these um, two lane highways as sort of national roads. And then I'm going to use these alleys and dirt roads to kind of cut through the area and create some small grids. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do though is purchase uh, a bunch of tiles so that we've got a little more space to uh, to work with.
So we've created some major farmland here. Had a bit of fun creating this hilly slash mountain road. <laughs> Not sure how realistic it is, but just wanted to try it out. Uh, created a few small hamlets out here as well. Valley Crest and Briarwood. Okay, if you've got suggestions, I'm going to go with that. Um, but then I also felt like just trying to pre-plan like an entire town as well. So I've... Um, created a town here which obviously also i mean could just be called chestnut i guess uh, based on the forest location um and i've pretty much just pre-zoned the entire thing tried to create a bit of space between much of the residential zones i'm hoping that's gonna help just preserve a few of the trees and create a bit more of a, a foresty look uh, because i would i would really like to try and, and maintain that um, but we'll see how it all looks when it starts when it starts growing. I think I left two spaces here for a bit of park landscaping or you know some uh, recreational uh, areas. Community pool. I mean, why not make this make this little place a little special? I'm gonna add a community pool to uh, the small town. And maybe we can even have like a skate park as well. So there, there's like an outdoor recreational area here. And then down here I'm going to add... Let's see, I'm going to add a large park, I think. And then just some pathways throughout. And that should pretty much do the trick for a, a small... Uh, hopefully a nice small town that people want to live in. I, I'm, I certainly have the demand. I don't know. Yeah, you can check my bars down in the left corner and you will see I, I have a ton of demand for pretty much pretty much everything except office, but that's okay. I've got quite a few office skyscrapers throughout the region, so it's not like I'm really struggling for, uh, for some of that type of development. Just going to create some super simple paths here as such and yeah we are gonna uh, hit play and see how this turns out and things are growing it's always a good feeling to zone out a bunch of stuff and then hit play i also added an interchange over here um interchanges are fun to build in Cedar Scanners too but i'm definitely no expert so it always turns out a little wonky but i'm pretty happy with the final results here it's bit of a weird curve we've got going here but from afar it looks pretty nice and look at all the development taking place here in chestnut i'm gonna just blow a ton of money on trees as i usually do just to ensure that any potential space that i've left uncovered uh is covered with, tr with trees so we have this uh, this continuous uh, forest look out here because I really enjoyed it. We've got so much forest out here. It's grown since the very beginnings of the city where I started planting it. And I think Chestnut is looking pretty good. Although for like future similar developments, I'd probably leave a bit more space between the houses. Uh, because it isn't, you know, not all, not that many trees are actually poking through. And as long as we can't actually plant trees on people's super boring gardens then uh, this is kind of what you have to do to get some trees poking through but overall i'm pretty happy with the look of our little town now for something else i'm starting to have a few electricity bottlenecks throughout the city uh, and this just highlights a more general problem which is that i'm not producing a ton of electricity anymore uh, so i'm super reliant on, on imports which is pretty expensive and since my two uh, my own two power generators are the North Dam up here and the Southern Dam down here. Uh, it's pretty hard to also bring electricity all the way in here through transformer stations. So I'm hoping I can solve both of the issues uh, with one move by building some sort of power source out here in this area. That is hopefully also going to reduce my reliance on imported electricity. Um, and yeah the, this dam is at very low uh efficiency this one is at 11 percent, and the northern one is probably even lower yeah it's at two percent and it's giving me a massive penalty due to low water depth but i'm not really sure why i mean there are a couple of meters of like 
a water level difference here, which, um, yeah, the penalty seems a little harsh, especially since these dams were pretty effective up until uh, one of the updates I we got when we had early access. So I'm hopeful that it's still working as intended, but they're not very efficient anymore. Now, since I'm also reliant on my neighboring cities for garbage processing and pickup, maybe uh, the way forward for me would be to build an incinerator plant, burning all my garbage and hopefully producing enough electricity to just reduce my reliance on imports. So we're going to try at least, going to unlock this. And I think I want to place it out here where we we've, we've already got uh, a bit of industry out here as well. Um, so I'm just I'm thinking maybe on this side of the of the river. I'm just gonna check. I'm probably gonna have to do some pretty extensive terraforming because it is kind of hilly. Uh, alternatively, I wait. I guess first I should just check the actual size of it just to get an idea. It's uh. X, sorry. <laughs> Fumbly fingers. Okay, so it's a oof, whoa, it's a damn, it's a pretty massive asset actually. Uh so where's a good spot to actually place this bad boy? It's pretty uh it's a pretty big polluter as well, so I have to just keep that in mind for wherever I place it. No, we're gonna we're gonna make room for it over here, I think, is my my conclusion. Let's see in oh it's wow, what an asset aim. <laughs> really big. Which which is a, it's a positive. I'm not complaining, I'm just a little surprised, I guess. So can we fit it without additional terraforming here? Oh yes. And I've got to connect it all up by road. So I guess there's an entrance somewhere around here. <laughs> I'll just, yeah, oh, super wonky. <laughs> Anyways, it's fine. It's fine. And I'll try and have to respect some of the topography as I make a connection here we'll see how this actually looks it actually looks kind of okay so pretty happy with how that turned out and while we add it we might as well just add a bit of a road layout so we can squeeze in some more industry and then I can I can fix that up afterwards but industrial zoning let's see okay so um, i've got the road here for the grid i can start laying out so that's pretty nice and i won't have room for a lot so i'm just gonna make like a super simple grid where i can add a bit of industry i don't even care about the zoning not being perfect that's fine and once again i'll make a road that hopefully looks like it respects the topography <laughs> Before I zone the industry, I need to get the power transferred into the ground. So we'll just make a transformer station right here. Because then I'm automatically connecting to the to the grid. I'll just I'll have this elevated. Like so. And this automatically connects to the road grids. Of course, I'll need to actually get some power across the highway here. And the little trick I learned from one of you guys is that if I upgrade with a lighting alongside this highway, then it actually carries the power underneath, which is super cool. I didn't think about that at all. So I'm hopeful that when I press play, I won't have an issue here with, yeah, that's gone because now we've got a main power generator right here uh, and i'm going to have to get my water pipes to connect up here as well and let's see if that's yeah that fixes everything so it's going to be interesting to see just how much electricity i can actually produce uh how much garbage i can start 
collecting because currently, as I said, I'm reliant on neighbors for garbage collection. Uh, and we're gonna maybe just add a bit of parking here as well. I'm starting to doubt whether industry here is actually a good idea. Or if I should just add some parking and let it let that be that. Just add a parking lot. I'll add a bit of industry. I have got so much demand, so I better I'm, I have to take my chances whenever I can. And I think it's a good spot. Makes it makes sense here. We'll maybe even have a building here. It's gonna almost look like it's part of the, the complex, hopefully at least. And I think I'm gonna just see if I can smooth this out a little bit. No reason for it to be this dramatic. And the first garbage truck is now returning with garbage. So until I actually start having some garbage to burn, then I guess efficiency is gonna be next to nothing and it's just gonna be a big big uh, big expense sorry uh so we'll see about 500 kilos of garbage was added but uh, at least it's enough to get it to start producing some electricity and can we let's see for our services electricity yeah, still no exports, but I guess that's because the efficiency is so low. I mean, I'm producing quite a bit more than I did previously from the two dams, and it's I can see it's rising steadily, so hopefully I can start exporting at some point. So I'm a bit worried that I've only got a single garbage truck out here collecting garbage. Um, just a, a, a little weird, because it should be able to dispatch 20. So maybe it's because the facility is located so far away. I guess the alternative um, reason is that maybe relying on neighboring cities to collect your garbage is super efficient. So there basically isn't any garbage right now and it has to build up for a bit at first. I guess I'll just let time pass. Well, we've got three trucks collecting now, so maybe it really just is a matter of time, but that's nice. Hopefully, hopefully we'll start making some money soon. All right, so it's a cloudy, moody day here in November. And something I'd like to add, which I don't know how realistic it is for a North American city, but I'd like to add some bus routes that serve these rural communities and they won't have a high frequency of, uh, of buses. I'll keep the lines with relatively few buses and I don't think I'm going to offer a nighttime service as well. So it's only going to be uh, in the daytime hours. And I think we'll, I'll just start by having two routes, one which starts at the, um, the bus station in downtown Riverview, cuts through the northern part of the city and then terminates either at Chestnut or probably probably Valley Crest. So it goes through Chestnut, Briarwood Gardens and Valley Crest. Uh, and then I'll have another route that also starts at the bus station, uh, goes through the southern part of Riverview, crosses the bridge, has a stop here in East Riverview and then serves some of these communities here on, on this side of the river. Um, so I'm gonna, of course, have to place a, uh, a bunch of stops throughout. So Chestnut as a uh, probably, I mean, it's the largest town outside of the two cities. Um, Chestnut is gonna have actual bus shelters. So I'll place two of those. Uh, then for these smaller settlements or hamlets, we'll just have some uh, some bus signs so that you get cold and wet if it rains. Because I'm just like that. And we will have, uh, let's see, we'll have some stops here in, in Valley Crest as well. And let me just quickly break up uh, this grid ever so slightly. Just adding another back road here where we can add a few homes. And the reason I do that is that it splits up the street so that the, the stop signs can be right here. 
in the middle alongside the small street. Cool. And then there's of course the question of these um, job centers, but I just checked and there's like 90 workplaces in Mill Bluff and and not too many here at the incinerator either so i mean i guess this is actually fine and then i have to i should probably also serve north caldwell and caldwell and then just go into the city through that route so let's do exactly that so we'll have a stop on either side of the road here and then as we enter Caldwell, we'll have a dedicated uh, bus shelter. It's a bit of a, a bigger town, really. There you go. We're going to cross the bridge. And we are going to have some stops here as well. If you don't want to take your car. Highly unlikely, but I want you to have the opportunity to not take your car. Uh, then we are going to serve the port of riverview through a couple of stops probably just here and the question is if we need a stop in between i i don't think that's the case i think that's fine uh let's see if we are going to have we're going to have some shelters probably here alongside main street and we'll need to find a uh, good segment here I'd actually need two stops alongside Main Street so we'll I don't want to place them I'll place them here actually I hope there's room for the buses to <laughs> to actually stop here but there should be and then I think we're gonna have a few extra stops over here shelters as well and we are really nearing downtown now so maybe we should avoid the main roundabout here and we should cut in here have a few stops in here as well that could be kind of fun one here and one here i like to make it a bit asymmetrical and then we can utilize these stops and we can terminate okay so that's the first line i'm just gonna map that out first and see if it actually makes makes any sense so let's start at our um, Riverview downtown bus central here. And we will add a stop here. Now this route actually highlighted a bit of an issue here because there's no way when you're on this northbound interstate to actually enter this uh, national road here. So the route ends up taking a super weird detour to actually serve Caldwell. So we're going to have to fix that. And I think the solution is probably going to be upgrading this to an asymmetrical road like so i can probably disable snapping here and bend it to my will so to say something like this and then we are going to uh, remove this connection and we'll add it to the outermost lane I mean, I mean, it works, right? <laughs> Although probably lane map, I should probably upgrade this to a a two laner, but I'm I'm just I'm pretty certain, yeah. I don't I don't really have the space to do that, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to have two uh, quite a dangerous merge here, but that's that's what it it takes, I guess. Uh, let's see if that. Uh, that actually automatically just fixed up the um, this route, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's just see. No, I'll just 
I'll wait till I've created the other one before I start configuring anything. So for the stops of this route, we should be covered all the way from the bus station throughout uh, the city of Riverview and up until we get here to East Riverview. Uh, and here I'm just, I'm going to place some, I think I'm going to place some shelters here so that we can, let's see, we've got a stop here. We could, I'm not going to reuse that. I'm going to make sure we have our own separate stops here. So I'm going to create two here. We'll switch to the, to the signs. Are we really going to serve a suburban subdivision with bus stops? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Actually, we are because because why not? I'll add a stop here and I'll add one over here. Then we are going to move into Crestwood where I think we could have two stops as well. Then we are going to have a stop as we move through uh, uh, Callaway. And we're going to go all the way out and have a stop here at uh, way also. Or oh, maybe just before actually here alongside the alley. And we are going to have a stop all the way out at Birdsong Corner as well. Not quite into the small hamlet, but just on the outskirts. To reduce noise, because I'm so kind. Cool, let's map out this route as well. We'll go into our bus station. We've got quite a few routes now starting in here, so we'll just start here. We might even, let's just add like, a, let's add a bus stop here. Right near the central gardens. And I'll have to start over, of course. That's a bit annoying. Oh well. Cool, so there's a couple of stops out here I can remove. We don't need this specific stop here. And I guess there's one over in Valley Crest as well that is actually not utilized. Let's see here. Yeah. Because it's the final stop. Of this line as well so let's name them bus line 4 will simply be rta which is riverview transit authority and then we'll just go for uh line 3 and we'll do the very same for this one uh, and that's how creative we are and then we are gonna go and switch the schedule to day only for both of them and we'll see how many buses actually spawn uh, because we don't want a ton of uh, of buses on these uh, on these smaller on these smaller routes i'm also curious to see if our depot can actually yeah, we can't handle too many more buses not without adding an extra garage at least which we could do just to future proof ourselves Cool, that gave a bunch of extra capacity. Anyways, let's uh, let's see our new our new routes uh, go into go into action. And I've got a feeling that these new routes definitely have too many buses on them, which wasn't really what I wanted. So one of them has eight. That's definitely too much. I'm gonna drop that. Quite a bit. Signed vehicles 9 is the lowest amount. Is that due to the number of stops or the length or whatever? I was hoping that I could go even lower. I don't I don't understand why we don't have that flexibility. Um, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how well they're going to serve these areas. And if people are actually going to line up to to actually grab a, to, to hop on a bus out here. I have my doubts, but we'll see. While we let our buses start debouncing and getting sorted and starting their routes, uh, we've built up quite a quite a hefty demand for just about everything except offices. 
So the final thing we're going to do in this episode is upzoning a bunch of stuff here in Riverview. And it's going to be a two-step approach. First up, I'm going to upzone some of the low-density single-family housing in these four inner-city neighborhoods to row housing. And then I'm going to also kind of sneak in a few medium-density assets uh, throughout especially here alongside the Riverview Central Gardens where we've also got some row housing here that I I would like to replace with more medium density. Uh, but first we're gonna upzone for a row housing. And the whole city is just one big construction lot now, which is always super exciting. I don't know why I get so hyped about it, but it's uh, it's pretty fun. This should also add uh, a pretty sizable population bump. We'll see if we can actually reach 30,000 by this change. Not quite sure, but I'm hopeful. So with our recent changes, we've actually, let's see, we've shot quite a bit past 30,000. Yeah, we're sitting at 30,600 and it's still growing. So that's very nice. If we take a look at Riverview, it should be pretty obvious to see the densification. I mean, this could almost be a downtown on its own, but it's uh, far from it really. Uh, so very very cool and i'm also happy with the the bus routes that are now just chugging through this area making sure that uh making sure that our outer communities are served as well for usage oh man this is so embarrassing six percent and eleven percent but i mean just a few moments ago it was one percent so maybe it's gonna ramp up and become better but it's probably not a good financial decision to have these routes but it's always fun to plan some bus routes and, and see some buses in, in some of these outskirts as well and this actually wraps up the episode I um, feel like we've done a bunch of random things crammed into a single episode but good progress everywhere and some pretty fun areas really looking forward to the feedback and suggestions from you guys on, on Blackbird Terrace I'm gonna leave you with some uh, cinematics but it's been raining for two months so it's probably still gonna rain during those cinematics so sorry in advance anyways thank you so much for tuning in and all the recent support and uh, i hope to see you all in the next one bye <laughs>